There will always be reasons why you can do something and why you can't. The outcome will depend on what you focus on. Now, having excuses is like being dishonest with yourself, and it allows you to drop your standards. We can look at some typical examples of excuses or reasons you have for yourself that can stop you from improving. Now, the way to see if an excuse is genuine is to question it. I'd like to start with one of the most destructive excuses, and that is believing that I am not capable of more. Now, this results in you achieving less than you're capable of, and it's having the attitude that it's out of my control. And if you remember, one of the standards was to never doubt your own ability. Now, the way you can solve it is to question it, such as, well, if I don't push myself, then how do I know what I'm capable of? That sort of thing. Now, it's the same with the genetics argument, believing that some people are just born with a natural ability to learn, and some people aren't. Well, again, yeah, I'll have to question that one, because it doesn't sound right, does it? If you think about it, firstly, it's been proven that the IQ is not fixed. It can improve dramatically. Secondly, you're already in college, so you must be doing well. And thirdly, if you just use common sense, like if we just relate it to the gym again, if someone goes to the gym and they work out six or seven days a week with the strategy, with the correct strategy, can you possibly imagine them not gaining more muscle or not losing the weight or whatever it is? You can't, can you? So you always want to make sure the excuses you have for yourself, they're not destructive. And you want to always question it to see if it's true or not. If we take another one, like I've got plenty of time left. This one is sort of like a comforter. It's trying to bring the stress down on yourself. But the one simple question you can ask with this one is, how is the future going to be different from now? How Do you have to be very specific? Like, will I have more time or less time? Am I going to have more stress and pressure or less? Because you're trying to, by saying, I'll do it later, you're trying to bring the stress down on yourself. But what you're actually doing is make, giving yourself more stress later on, aren't you? Thirdly, the most important one is, can I control the future and can I control now? If we take the best and worst case scenario again, you can't control the future, can you? So in the worst case, if we remember back to the consequences section, the worst case, you might be ill. I only need 60% to get an A. This, again, is like a comforter. If you use it to bring your stress level down, then that's fine. The problem is, this becomes a problem if it leads you to putting less effort into your work. And you need to recognize it, recognize it as dropping your standards. Because as, we, as we've already said, improvement is more important than your result anyway. Now, the way you can question something like this is, well, if you're in your AS year, maybe you only need 60% to get an A at this level, but AT is going to be much harder, right? Well, relatively harder. So you probably need more than 60% now to be able to get an A overall. But if you're in A2 year, you can ask questions for that as well. For example, let's say if you get 60%, let's say you even do get the 60%. Now, when you go to university, it's likely that you're going to carry on that subject if you go to university. And you don't want to be falling back because there's still 40% of the module or the syllabus that you don't know if that's the level of effort you put into it. You can think of it that way. Or if we go back to the very con original thing that we discussed, consequences, the worst and best case, if this excuse leads you to putting less effort into your work, which makes th which the grade you want, you miss it by 1%, how much regret are you going to feel? That sort of thing, which is true. Now, there are others that are worse than me. This one is a very common one, and it's definitely not a good thing to have. One of the standards, just generally a very good standard to have, is always to compare yourself to yourself from three months ago, or two months ago, or whenever. Because it's, I'll, I'll go through the two cases, it just never works. It's always good to compare yourself with yourself only. Now, there are two cases, you're either better or you're worse. Now, if you compare yourself to someone that's better than you, now, if you're comparing the results only, that can be a bit demotivating and it's no point. But if you're comparing the actual strategies and the level of improvement, that can be worth doing. What's more impressive, someone that goes from an A to an A or someone that goes from a D to a B? It's obvious. Now, if you compare yourself to someone that's worse than you, that is, firstly, it's emotion driven because you're only doing it to make yourself feel better. If it was intellectually driven, you'd compare your strategies with someone that's better than you to see how you can improve. Now, if we go back to you comparing yourself that's to someone that's worse than you, not only is it emotion driven, but it's not constructive. If this, if this means that you're the best in the class and you're just happy the way you are because you're better than everyone else, that's not constructive because you might not be the best that you can be. Resets. Now, you definitely don't want to consider a reset as an option because when you think that you can always reset, it's going to lead you inevitably to put less effort into what you're doing now. Now, the problem with resets is far too many people do them. And when we ask in our classes, it's always interesting. When we ask whoever's resetting, 
what, how are you going to be different? What's different strategies? What's the new thing that you're going to do this time to make sure it's different? And you'll be very surprised how people can hardly ever give a decent answer. I definitely think it's worth going through exactly, logically, what the consequences of resets are. Firstly, it's double the effort and double the time for no reason. It's not only double, it's a waste, isn't it? The whole term's work and the whole term's worth of time is a complete waste because you have to do it all again. Confidence. Now, luckily, if you're in year 12, you probably haven't had the opportunity to reset, which is, which is a good thing. Now, you need to consider, though, if you're in year 13 or year 14, and you're in a room full of year 12 doing an exam, you're going to feel a bit embarrassed, aren't you? You're going to start losing your confidence, which we're going to come on to. It's a big deal. It's an important thing. Other exams, clashes. Now, again, if we go back to the worst and best case scenario, in the worst case, you might have clash, or you might have two resets in, in an AM session, and in the PM session, you have the actual thing. In fact, it's not even the worst case, it's an average case. Normally, AS and A2 exams are taken in the same day. So, imagine what the, imagine what the consequences can be. You can be tired, you can be really upset over how an AM exam went. It's going to mess up your PM exam as well. It's definitely a consequence worth considering. Now, the biggest one is your chances. Logically thinking, how are my chances going to improve? Because if we go through it, to see how it's going to be different in the future. Now, you've had, when you initially take your exam, you have a teacher's full attention, a full term worth of classes, a full term worth of you going home, doing work, or whatever it is, your homework, your essays, everything. And it all leads up to this one exam. Now, when you're doing a reset, you're not going to have any of that. You're not going to have any of the class time, and you're probably not going to have, you're not, you won't have the opportunity to commit as much time as to study, at, study on it when you're at home because you have other commitments and other exams. Now, is the stress going to be more or less? It's going to be a lot more, because you'll have other exams, and desperation comes into it. It gets a lot more serious. Not only this, the effort and time and regret and guilt and all that builds up. It just makes it a terrible situation for you to be in. So, to sum up, firstly, resets. You don't want to consider resets as an option. Secondly, you want to always be aware of an excuse, a comforter a reason why you can't do something. It's always worth considering the consequences in detail.